All right, everybody, I am going to paint the throne from the Game of Thrones Kickstarter exclusive uh, Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game by Cool Mini or Not. So I have with me, I have this uh, makeup brush uh, that I'm going to use to dry brush this uh, throne. So we're going to talk about dry brushing. Um, what I did was, uh, I, originally it was this color, and I spray painted it with a black uh, spray paint. Um, for this, I used the Army Camouflage spray paint you get at Walmart for, like, really cheap. It makes a really good primer. Um, got in all the cracks really good with, uh, with the primer. And it's time to paint it. So I'm going to use some of this... Um, Shining silver as my base and what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt a little bit out here on On my palette and I'm going to take this makeup brush and just kind of dab it in there and then brush it off I'm out of paper towels. Oh, I should probably go get a little bit of toilet paper I'll be right back All right, so usually I use paper towels, but I'm going to use some tissue paper here. Brush it off until you see how when I brush the paper, it just hits the the texture there. That's what we want. So we're just going to go for it. Great thing about the makeup brush is it's got a big enough area, surface area, to really um, get in there and brush the whole thing. And you can do, you can paint really fast with a big huge brush like this. And since we're just hitting the surface areas on this throne, that's all we need to do really. I do want to get in these little cracks here. There we go. That's a lot of swords of conquered kings. The conquered families of Westeros. Bowing to the Targaryens. So this is going to be very simple to paint up. It's not going to take me very long at all. Now that I've gotten all those swords painted on here, I'm going to go in in detail the hilts on some of these swords boom that's pretty much where I need it to be yeah it's pretty good not hard at all looking for any spots I may have missed Probably get these a little bit more silver. Okay, so uh, the next step once this dries is I'm gonna take some uh, some of this uh, dark tone. This is like an ink or a wash, um, and this will get all the little cracks and kind of blend in all the swords and make them look less painted and more realistic. And then I'll go over again with another dry brush. So let's let this dry, and I'll come back. So while we're letting this dry, I'm just um, uh, get, using up some of my silver on Sir Gregor Clegane. Kind of get get him all dry brushed too. I also gave him the same kind of base coat. So we'll scoot that back. Kind of give him silver. I'm not gonna finish him up in this video, but I am going to use up all my silver. So you can see I'm pretty much painting the whole miniature. I'm not worried about getting in the cracks because the wash is going to get kind of bring the black back into those cracks that I'm kind of covering up. So we got Clegane in that version. Here's him in that version. Of course we have the mountain that rides. Here we go. Paint them all up. What do you guys think is going to be the fate of the mountain? Is he finally going to get killed in the Game of Thrones? 
Will his brother take him out? One can only hope. These cool mini or not models are so big. It takes a lot of paint to cover up. It's kind of nice having the scale of model to paint though. I don't paint very many uh, models of this scale ever. Because not very many people make them. Get in there. And again, the key to dry brushing is not to get it too wet with paint. We just want to get in there and get all the all the main areas. Silver. Kind of half wet brushing and half dry brushing this guy. I'm just, again, I'm just trying to cover the most areas possible. This horse is super armored. And any areas that I accidentally spill onto, I want to just smooth out that paint so that when I paint over it later, I won't have all these lumpy bumps. I want to smooth that out as much as possible. All right, so there's uh, three flavors of Clegane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so move them out of the way. Okay, so let's go back to a dark tone for this one. Um, it's pretty dry now. I didn't let it sit for very long. Hopefully I won't mess it up. I'm going to put a healthy amount of uh, tone in there. Now I want to get another big brush to kind of wash it with. Um, I'm going to try this other makeup brush. This used to be a fluffier makeup brush, but I've done a lot of painting with it and it's starting to harden a little bit, but the tip's still kind of soft. It can soak up some of this wash. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to paint that tone in. And as you can see, after you've dry brushed, this tone is going to add better shading to all your swords on this throne. So see how it kind of defines defines those lines a little bit better? I'll just kind of blend it in. So a little bit of that didn't go a very long way because we have a lot of surface area, a lot of cracks in here to cover. So let's get a little bit more of that. I could probably water this down more if I wanted to. But we're just going to go for it. Now with washing, it will kind of puddle in, in certain areas. So once you've got it started, you, you might want to go back, kind of dab at certain areas, kind of pick up all the extra that you left behind. One thing I probably could have done is I probably could have detailed all those before I put the black wash on so that when I came back again, I wouldn't have to wash it twice, but I'm just kind of speed painting this thing. You know, honestly, like this is a cool piece at all, but the simplicity of of the fact that you, all you're working with are uh, are bare swords, you, you're not going to want to add too many other colors to this throne, I don't think. And if you want to get really crazy, you could probably put like blood stains and stuff like that on there, but that doesn't make any real sense because this is forged with dragon fire, so all these swords are kind of just melted together. There we go. This is actually going to turn out really good once it's done. 
Let's get it in there. Shaking the camera a little bit. Sorry, guys. Speed painting the throne. So who do you think is going to get the throne? Will there be a throne left after this? I have my own theories. I think, um, you know, I don't think anybody's going to be getting the throne, to be honest with you. I think George R. R. Martin is just really putting in there, storytelling-wise, how, how different systems just don't work. Like the systems of government, marriage, religion, like all of it. He's like kind of pointing out all the problems with it. Which is a very cynical point of view of the world. But, you know, he makes some good points in the stuff that he does kind of highlight with that and I think the Iron Throne is kind of a symbol of how kingdoms have come and come and gone and they rise and fall and it's all kind of for naught because in the end you die everybody dies so we'll see what happens but I'm my theory is that um, Jon Snow is probably going to sacrifice himself in some sort of way. Um, Daenerys, she seems like you know the princess that was promised and she's rising to power. But I think that's all going to go to crap. The same thing with Cersei. We know that she's got to end her reign of terror. Alright, well, look at that. I'm going to take the camera here. I'll look at this throne. So I've come up here with that wash and kind of filled in all the cracks. And now all I got to do is go in there and add some different colors of gold and copper to those swords. Kind of make that stand out. We also have a couple swords on this side kind of poking out the opposite ways. But lucky for me, the rest of this is blades. So all these blades here, all I got to do is hit that with some more uh, dry brushing. Yep. All right, so let's let this dry, and I'll come back for some dry brushing. Oh, yeah. Alright, now, now that this is pretty much dry, I'm going to take uh, some of this gold here, and this was starting to dry up a little bit, so I got have a little bit of water to the side, kind of get a little bit there, and I'm going to come in and start, whoops, kind of missed a little spot, kind of accidentally got some gold in there when I wasn't looking. Wasn't paying attention. Here we go. So I'm going to go add some gold to some of these swords in here. Pretty simple, really. And luckily, the details on this are pretty big. So it's going to be hard to miss. I can even kind of dry brush a little bit back here because these are all hilts. Mainly. It's interesting how, um, in the books, how big this throne is and how small the one is in the HBO show. First of all, a thousand swords. This is probably way more than a thousand swords. 
to make a throne this big. So it's a little over exaggerated visually, but that's okay. Fun fact, one of the swords on the Game of Thrones television show is Gandalf's sword. Lord of the Rings is welded into the chair. A little fun Easter egg hidden there by the prop designers. I bet they put some other swords in there that were from other popular movies and shows too. Be interesting to see kinda what what other things they hid. I'm gonna put that one right there and that one right there. Got it. Okay. Oh, there's a hilt over here. This is gonna be like where's Waldo? Finding all these these little little edges. Uh oh, cats want in. No kitty, I'm painting. Go away. I'm painting. That's one thing you gotta watch out for when you're painting, is if you have cats, the cats will uh, jump up and try to cuddle you while you're painting, which uh, which more often than not gets hair in your paints and on your models, which sucks, but it's worth the risk, because pets are fun. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, got to get in there. There's one hidden in here. That's right, kitty. I'm going to paint the throne. Are the rest of these just blades? Looks like a lot of blades to me. I don't see any more hilts to paint. And we had this one down here. But I don't see anything else. That's right, kitty. I don't see anything else to paint. Oh, oh, I found one. There's some handles in here. There's some handles right there. Oh, there's a whole plethora of handles right in here. Told you it was gonna be like, where's Waldo? so gently let's get a little bit closer here camera so what I want to do is add probably a, some brown washes in here kind of bring out that gold um, We really want to bring that out, make that pop. Go back in there. I could, I'm not going to do leather handles on any of these because if this was all melted by dragon fire, that stuff would have burnt up. So I'm just going to keep the gold. Maybe put in some copper. Haven't quite decided yet. Yeah. There we go. Alright, I've decided I'm going to add a little bit of copper. I want to not make it too royal here. 
So I'm gonna, some of these I already painted gold, so I'm just going to go over it with a little bit of copper. Make some of these look like they're from a different kingdom. Just generally in here. And I gotta get this little cluster. I found a couple other swords along the path that were also gold painted. I put little copper tops on them. Boop, boop. So some of these will be a little bit different. There we go. Now the one thing that's going to make this stuff stand out is when I wash it again. We'll kind of blend it. Let's flip this around. Do some of these in the back here. go let's see it's kind of muddy up here always check it from every angle I'm not too worried about the details here because Again, these are all melted together from dragon fire, so. I would expect it to be a little, a little burnt. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're back to washing. Let's take a little bit of brown wash. I'm going to use this uh, flesh wash right there just a little bit. I don't have to wash very much of it, but... Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to flesh wash the brown over some of these golden handles here. Brown and yellow work really well together wash-wise. So does the copper. And I'm gonna get a little bit of brown in here too. Just kinda Make it look a little dirtier. Flush the wash went fast. All right, here we go. A little bit more. Slip it around. Get some flush wash in here. Yeah. I'm going to brown up a little bit of this. Make it look like over the years it's kind of gotten dirtier down in here. Like not a lot, just a little bit. Oh no. Almost out by the wash.
I'm sure you could also probably paint in some really cool lighting effects in here if you're really that talented. You can get in here and kind of add some shade. You know what? We are that talented. Why limit your why limit yourself, right? We're gonna use some draconite shade, one of my favorite things to put on silver. Screw it. We're amazing painters and we're gonna make this amazing. So don't limit yourself. Alright, so I'm gonna put this on one side of the throne here. This blue wash. This will kind of give it a lighting effect. I'm going to kind of shove in a little bit of blue down in here on that side. It'll be like, like some gloominess is in the throne, the throne room. And the light kind of glows blue a little bit in the shadows. Yes! I love blue on silver. Alright, let's just the camera down here. So you can see what that's doing. It's adding that kind of I'm going to call it a James Cameron kind of glow on that silver. It's a good thing this bottle's almost already empty. Otherwise, I'd be spilling this stuff everywhere. You see what that kind of does with the, the brown and the blue together? Kind of makes it look almost rusted or aged metal, like that. Yeah, that's some cool stuff right there. I just love it so much, we're gonna do the whole thing in blue. Oh, I'm so happy I did that. Okay, looks like a mess. But when we dry brush it again, all that's gonna be like, Hiding in the back background of all of the um, the edges of the swords just this little blue Kind of tint Will make this look kind of deeper in there That's gonna look really good. All right, I'm gonna dry this off again Forged with dragon fire <laughs> The dragon's name was Connor. Okay, so now I'm gonna take uh, another one of my makeup brushes here, and I'm going to uh, use some of this silver. This stuff's kind of runny, but it's really, really, really metallic-y. So I'm gonna. Um, get some in here. Just kind of brush it off a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do? I hit these these swords here just gently. Gonna make these swords pop out a little bit. I want to get the tips of the swords. Stand out the most. This will make them a little bit sharper looking. Here. But you can see how much contrast this really gives using the blue wash, the black wash. And the brown wash, you know, it gives gives this whole thing kind of an aged look. 
Doesn't need much dry brushing. I'm just trying to bring it out a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna go to back to the shining silver. This shining silver is pretty darn good. But I do wanna use a smaller dry brush this time. Oh, what to choose, what to choose. I don't I want something too big. I'm gonna go for just a brush like that. So I can get a little bit in there. Make sure it gets in the bristles. Always test it on paper. Oh, I actually dried that one out. There we go. Shining silver is pretty good. It's kind of don't want it too wet, but I want to get the the tips of these swords to pop out a little bit more. Not bad, not bad. The, with a piece this big, it's really easy to try to get nitpicky on it. Because you want it to be really cool. But then again, sometimes the, the fast paint jobs are just fine. I feel like this needs another wash. Those handles just aren't, they look kind of like a clump of gold. Which, you know, it's fine, but we can do better. Because we're amazing and talented. Don't let anybody tell you you're not. Especially yourself. You can do it. Okay. Let's get my flesh wash. Oh, we do have a little bit left over there. So we're going to take this in. We're going to come in here and wash that. There we go. And mix in a little bit of black wash too. That'll help. There, how's that look? A little bit better, right? You know, it doesn't take very much talent to paint. Anybody can do it. It does take talent to get really good at it. But anybody can do a halfway decent job if they know how to dry brush and how to wash. Get some more of that brown. I feel like that brown really helps. Getting it in kind of around in here. If I go in kind of the, the archy arch, areas. Kind of let the dirt settle in. In different levels it'll kind of give it a more tiered look. Alright, so I think we're pretty much done. Just a general paint job there. 
Um, oh, you know what? Let's get some more in here. Uh, whip out the Draken Nightshade, my favorite. This is like my favorite wash. There's, I know there's cheaper ways of making your own, but I'm too lazy right now. So I just buy the expensive Games Workshop stuff. Put in a little bit more contrast in there. Kind of highlights the throne a little bit more. And that, uh, that sheen from this wash, it's just the wet part of it. That'll, that'll die down once, once I spray, um, blow dry it. All right, I'm going to blow dry this, take one more look, and I think we're pretty much done. All right, so... It's pretty much done. There's a couple wet spots still on here, but I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I'm gonna come in here with my dry brush in here. I'm gonna kind of bring out these swords a little bit more, and these swords just a little bit on the tips, and a little bit back in here. So bring that out. But, yeah, what do you guys think? It's pretty Game of Thronesy. The Iron Throne is now complete. All the touch-ups. But, yeah, I call that done. I'm going to... Um, Give it a clear coat to kind of protect my paint job so that I can play with it in games. But there you go. So now we have the Iron Throne from the Song of Ice and Fire miniature tabletop war game. So if you're afraid of painting miniatures, it's real easy. You just gotta wash it and dry brush it and you're good. Do 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 do